Hi, this is Wishup, and this is a tarot card reading for the full moon of October 5th, which is in Aries, and it goes through the new moon in Libra of October 19th. So what's going on right now is a lot of push-pull uh, negotiation of energies. And um, let me explain briefly. Um, the sun, which we think of in Western astrology as having a masculine kind of cast or energy, it is in Libra, which is ruled by Venus, so a feminine sign. And the moon, which we think of as having the distinctly feminine cast to its energy, is in Aries, which is ruled by Mars, therefore a masculine sign. So we have the feminine luminary in a very masculine sign. We have the male luminary in a very feminine sign. And at the same time, we have Venus and Mars in conjunction in Virgo. And neither of them rule Virgo. And in fact, neither of them is at their greatest comfort in Virgo, actually. Even though Venus uh, rules another earth sign, Taurus, Virgo keeps her from being as lavish as she'd like to be. And Mars wants to run off and do stuff. And Virgo says, let's think about it first. So you can imagine um, Virgo and Mars are being sat down at a table in Mercury's kitchen because Mercury, um, who rules communication and interchanges commerce uh, between people, is basically sitting them down at the kitchen table and making them negotiate. And it can be awkward. And this could include negotiations in your work life, in your home life, certainly, of course, in relationships. But there's a real need to strike a new balance. Um, people talk a lot about being balanced, and it's, of course, very important. But what I think is less discussed is that the balance point changes. So what's balanced on a seesaw between two grade school kids is going to be different from the balance for two adults or one kid and one adult. You know what I mean? So what happens is you're being asked to find a new balance because you've probably made some changes over the last several years, important ones. And Pluto is still working transformationally for all of us. And so what is your new balance? And people talk about the new normal as if it's always a downgrade. Well, I guess this is the new normal. Sometimes it feels that way, but it isn't necessarily because we have stories of people who've maintained wonderful attitudes of joy and love in the face of tremendous hardship, and not because they were ignoring what they saw around them or were unrealistic, but because they took an attitude towards it that allowed them to keep their hearts open. And so I think we have... Um, some calamities around, um, to put it mildly, around the world, not just in the U.S. And they challenge us because we want to give to help people, but we also, if we're not personally affected, want to find some way to reduce our anxiety about it because we feel for other people. We're empathetic and we feel for their sorrow and sometimes that makes us feel like we need to be in sorrow too. But that's not always the best way to be a strong helper to someone else. And you're not asked to um, give up your own sense of poise because someone else is having a terrible day. And I know that sounds really selfish, but the fact is when most of us are strong, and well balanced, we're in a much better position to help people who are having hard times. So I want to sort of throw that out there. There's a balance point here between 
your service and your work between what you put out and what you get back. And right now the energy is not saying hit the gas, like maybe you don't hit the gas because if you have been putting out and putting out and putting out and it's not working, this is a great time to reevaluate. Let that full moon, full moon illuminate what's not working and also help you get real with your sense of self. What are your expectations? What are you going in with? Maybe there are things about yourself that you're ready to understand that will help you find a new balance point. So I'm using the Golden Tarot by Cat Black, which is a great one. Ah, here's Temperance in Reverse. <laughs> well, she could not be more welcome. Seven of Wands in Reverse. Six of Swords. Okay, I have to laugh because I've been getting messages like this similarly in my personal readings. Okay, so Temperance points to, obviously, we think of Temperance as the balance card, right? And she's got the fluid going from cup to cup and she's making something new. She's mixing things up. And here we have a black lily and a white lily. She's on water and on land. Um, she's got divine consultation. So maybe you've got advice from other people. But right now, you don't quite have it mastered. You're working on it but you don't quite have that new recipe figured out. You know, Venus and Mars haven't made a new chore list yet, especially because I think of them being in the sixth house of daily work and service, and they're trying to split up the chores, and they don't have it all agreed yet. The Seven of Wands in sort of the past position, we think of this as sort of a noble fight, excuse me, a fight that requires bravery, and um, requires um, staying above the fray, if you will. Here it says, we're not really sure that we're fighting the good fight. We're not really sure that we're staying above the fray. And in fact, actually, let me point this out. We may be reconsidering whether or not these people down below are actually attacking us. Are we reacting to situations that are not truly attacks? You know, where we are feeling um, reactive, like we want to respond, like we want to shut something down. But the approach to us might even be an approach of support, not necessarily hostility. So um, there can be that at work. And the Six of Swords, which is funny because the Six of Swords in the upright is obviously a card of guidance of uh, rescue, of kind of trying to get out of difficult waters. If we see these two cups being sort of Aquarian with the two waters, and then we've got sort of the rougher water and the smoother water of the Six of Swords, we're sort of finding this course between both of them. And this card says, maybe we haven't found that course yet, but it also says, um, flipping it again, don't run away. <laughs> this is an awkward place to be. I see this as very awkward energy. We're in a negotiation and uh, nobody wants to lose, but nobody wants to win. We don't want to feel like we're, um, conquering or, um, dominating somebody else unduly. And yet at the same time, there are things which we really hope to receive out of a situation and we don't have it figured out. I mean, all of these point to me and you should see the, the cards I've been getting in my personal reading. So I apologize if this is, doesn't resonate at all for you. It certainly does for me. There's a negotiation of the new. If you've started something new in your life and now you're in it, it's kind of like, how do I make this work? And the urge is to slide back into what's comfortable, things that have worked for you before. And maybe you're not leaving them behind because they're so terrible. They might not even be dysfunctional approaches to life, but they're not what you need in this situation. They're not the right tool for this job. So as comfortable as they are, you're having to 
figure out something different and that can feel very awkward and it can feel like Venus and Mars sitting down at the kitchen table with their arms crossed not wanting to talk to each other and Mercury the communicator and the healer going okay kids everybody get your grievances out let's let's try and come to some compromise and so I see that at work in relationships in your day-to-day life in your routine and it's not a completely comfortable process right now I definitely think it's going to happen we're going to get to that new moon in Libra Libra is uh, the very diplomatic sign and that new moon is like a new agreement a new um, peaceful position a new point of balance but we've got this two weeks of butting heads even it could even be butting heads with Aries and it's also a time um, very much I think to get real with ourselves let that full moon illuminate ourselves and really see what we need what we have to have but also how are we contributing to friction is that is it important how are we tying our ego to certain negotiation points that are not essential am I sticking with something out of pride rather than out of necessity right what is what do you really need in the situation are there things that you think you can give up now that maybe wouldn't have been proper a year ago or three years ago so I think these are complicated questions and I think that's why the energy feels so kind of crunchy right now but I think that there is a path forward from it so I picked an Oracle of Shadows and Light card because I felt like these are such you know balance point questions okay the mildew fairy says cleanup time so this is interesting so this is great sixth house energy since Virgo is uh, known to be a great uh, area for cleanups and for um, sanctifying and purifying things the mildew fairy some things just look like they're yuck but they're not they're good things and they can be powerful and helpful when used in the right way if the mildew fairy turns up in your reading it's time to check out what could be profoundly useful for you which you have dismissed and this could be an aspect of yourself or an aspect of the environment that you're in it's very important not to try to hide this from yourself or to cover it up the health of the situation rests upon the degree of openness you approach it with and to me that's very much in tune with the idea that the full moon is going to shine some lights on things in um, in Aries things about ourself that we are going to need to come to terms with in order to make healthy progress in a situation in our life so let me go on and read the rest it always shocks me when people think something shouldn't be there like me I grow naturally where it's warm and wet and I love to show you what you may need to take care of I can do wonderful things I can be medicine and I can be a parasite too and that's very much again back to that balance it's not either or it's not all or nothing it's not hit the gas or hit the brakes it's what's the right speed where am I where should I be right now and how does that work with the other people involved in situations or the other circumstances I'm working with Uh, to return the mildew fairy says all the time I'm showing you what is going on what you need to change and whether the conditions are too steamy for you if they are freshen up your environment naturally when I turn up something is unhealthy and you aren't noticing or getting it so be thankful for my presence and build a little algae or fungi pond in my honor and treat yourself to tasty mushrooms they're all healthy ways to honor me so I think this is a kind of a great message which is that the we're dealing with balance points and the way through them is with authenticity and finding healthy solutions so I hope you do rock on with your bad self